I realized, okay, I need to create this moment that makes an impact for myself. And I want to create that experience for other people as well. So I wanted to educate people like, this is how you can make an impact for climate change. And I wanted to create, this is the now or never kind of moment to do that. So that was my intention behind doing this. Hey everybody, this is Becky Legiro. I'm here today with Eric Bergman. He is the founder of Great.com and welcome back to CalvinAir.com, Eric. Always a Thank pleasure to see your smiling face. And today I'm, I'm really excited to cover the topic that we're about to dive into here. Um, we're here today to inspire and educate the whole world really on the global warming issue that, that we have. And the reason why we're here today, Eric, is because I saw on your social media that you are doing something that's pretty amazing, which is really raising awareness and you're actually doing something yourself to help fix this problem. And uh, what you're doing, I'm gonna let you dive into more details because it's you pretty- You look so excited. <laughs> but I know I am. <laughs> is that you are, you're pledging to match up to a million euros towards this cause. And so, um, first of all, I mean, wow, and, and bravo. That's just so cool. And I'm so happy to know someone who's doing something like this. So I'm gonna stop talking and let you describe to our audience what it exactly is that you pledge to do and what your goal is by doing this. Sure. Okay, so I, if we start in a little bit of a di different direction, I've been involved with charity for a bunch of years, doing all kinds of things and trying to figure out what is the most pressing cause in the long term. And I've been told by experts that it's the climate change and you hear it everywhere, but still I've struggled to really grasp what that means. It's like, sure, a couple of temperature changes. What does that really mean? The water being a little bit higher doesn't, I haven't felt connected really to that. So I started uh, doing my own research on this a couple of months ago, because whenever I asked someone who wasn't an expert, what does it mean with climate change? I, I couldn't really get a straight answer. No one really understood how will it impact Sweden, for example. Like, sure, it might be warmer summers, and it's hard to really connect. And I realized that, okay, by year 2050, there will be so many places on earth where it will be drought and hard to actually grow seeds and stuff like this, that we will have approximately 100 million climate refugees. And I've heard so many times that the world is just getting better and better, like you see these things. And if you look at world hunger, the trend of people who don't have enough food has been going steadily down for the last decades or hundreds of years. And it shifted five years ago to starting going up again. So now actually more and more people are hungry and it's due to climate change. And when I started to realize this, it was the first thing that I was like, huh, okay, so the problem isn't really that polar bears are dying. Polar bears, that's sad. Problem isn't really coral reefs that are dying. Problem, well, one of the main problems is, that, okay, big parts of the world is gonna be unlivable and 100 million people are gonna need to find a new place to live. When we had the war in Syria, we had a million people coming to Europe and that was chaos. We remember the images like by the Greek border and stuff like that. It was horrible. It was a million. What does it mean to our Western population if there is, sure, 100 million are not going to come to Europe exactly, but a lot of them. And that kind of started to get me to understand, okay, one of the biggest problems with climate change will be political and refugees and no one wanting to take these people in and all of these things. And it got easier because it got tangible in a sense uh, for me. So I felt since then, okay, I really want to take action on this and still I've struggled to take action. I, I did the research. How do I give the best? What can I do? Where is the most impactful charities? Because it's also like, okay, what do you do to stop climate change? Do you plant trees? Do you stop eating meat? Do you stop flying? Whatever you can do. So I did all of this research, talked to all of these experts, find out what to do, and I'll get back to that. Uh, but I still didn't really manage to motivate myself to actually get out there and do it. And I've thought about why that is. And I think that to do charity, two things needs to happen. One thing is that we need to be convinced that the money that we're giving away makes a difference, like a meaningful difference. If you don't believe that, there is no reason to give. Uh, but even if you know that, 
you still need something to happen for you to take action. If you get cancer, for example, like you have that really strong and impactful move, moment, like, okay, I have a cancer diagnosis or someone around me. And you know that we're giving money to cancer research is gonna make an impact. So you're probably gonna donate money. But with the climate change, we never have that impactful moment or it's unlikely, it, we don't see it happening. It's coming so gradually. So I knew that my money would make a difference because I spoke to all of these experts, but I never had this, luckily enough, no cancer diagnosis moment. So I realized, okay, I need to create this moment that makes an impact for myself. And I want to create that experience for other people as well. So I wanted to educate people like, this is how you can make an impact for climate change. And I wanted to create, this is the now or never kind of moment to do that. So that was my intention behind doing this. So what I did was that I put together a post on Facebook uh, to challenge the richest people I know, because those are the ones who can do an impact. And in my mind, they should do an impact. And I wrote that, okay, these are the best ways of giving to, to climate change. And I address three of the most important ways of doing it, which one is changing the engines in big shipping boats from diesel to ammonia, which is a technique we have today. Like, you know, these big shipping boats and going all across the oceans and they have dirty diesel engines. And we can actually pretty easily change them to ammonia engines and they have zero CO2 emissions. So that's one of them. A second one is doing tax reductions for coal plants, these huge coal plants, if they install technology that capture carbon dioxide instead of just letting it out in the atmosphere. Because now they're just letting it out. And if they capture it, they get lower taxes. And th they've done that in the US, uh, among other places. And that has a very big impact because then these coal plants will make an effort. And the third one is to expand on new nuclear technology which is technology that has this really bad reputation and that people mm -hmm. think is lethal and people think is really bad for the environment because we don't know what to do with the like uranium and stuff. But what people don't uh, stay aware of is that it's like a thousand times deadlier with coal plants and stuff like that. And we yeah. don't know how to deal with the emissions of that either, but we let it straight out. The difference yeah. with the nuclear is that we actually keep it in. So we're just letting this out and people die from cancer and from pollution and all of these things. And it's so, so much worse. But nuclear, due to like Chernobyl and things like that, that's what mm -hmm. people think. But it's actually the safest electricity that we have. It's like comparing flying with driving a car. Like people are scared of flying, but it's, it's much, much safer to fly yeah. than it is to drive a car. Yeah. So I highlighted these three things uh, because I wanted to give the education. I wanted to tick that box. And then I said... I will do double all donations up to 1 million euros that someone else put in. So if you if you put in 100,000 euros here, I'm going to put in 100,000 euros as well. And I'm doing that for two reasons. One, that I want to really show I have full conviction in this cause. I've done the research. I know this is the best to do, to be able to tick that first box for other people. And the other one is to tick the second box. Like, I'm doing this right now. I'm putting you on a spot here, which might not be the nicest things. And I've gotten some bad emails about it. But I'm, I'm, I want to create that a big moment where you need to take action because climate change isn't creating that for me. So I did this, I wrote this post on Facebook and you can find it on my Facebook page, anyone who wants. And I tagged some 20 people uh, to try and get this ball rolling. And I got some replies really early on and it started to take off. And now it's been a few days and I've raised over a million euros, including my half. So it's been like 500 and 40,000 euros, I think, from other people. Yeah. And then I'm shipping in another 540,000 myself uh, into this. And I'm super excited about this. And I'm almost even more excited about what you told me just before this interview started, yeah. that you started researching climate change because you saw this. You started learning about it. it. You, you got interested. And that excites me so much because it means that Sure, maybe it was only 10 or 20 people donating, but hopefully 1,000 or 2,000 people started researching and thinking about it and all these things. I'm, I'm very excited about all of this around it. And it was more or less of an impulse thing to do it. 
and was really scary to kind of put myself out there. But it, it made real. I'm very happy with it. Yeah, and, and, and it's why we're sitting here today, Eric, honestly. And, and, and as we were talking about, I've known about climate change and everybody knows about it, right? And it's been going on for years and years. It's been in the media, it's been in, you know, we, we've heard about it. But now it's really reaching a point where it's just, it's, it's critical to do something. And I think what's interesting is that the world now is so focused on COVID, right? Which is a horrible issue. And I'm not downplaying that whatsoever. But this issue actually like in, in however many years, 50 years, it's going to be way worse if we don't do something. Way worse. I mean, it, this is the thing that I don't think people understand. So when you started talking about this, and also by the way, every person that then read your post and then and then donated some money, their family, their friends, you know, they're going to know about it too. So what you've done is this like ripple effect and it's awesome, I love it. <laughs> um, but what I wanted to know also, um, we could, you know, could talk more about the issue of climate change in a second, but where is this money actually going? I know that you are, I believe it's called Founders Pledge, you're a part of. Yes, it's going to the Founders Pledge Climate Fund. Yeah. So Founders Pledge is this amazing organization that I've been involved with for a while. The goal is to get entrepreneurs interested in charity. And it's a network of people. And the only way you're allowed in is by signing an agreement that says, when I sell my business, I will give X percent to charity, where a common number is like 5%. So you don't need to give anything right now, but when you sell it, or if you do an IPO or whatever it is, or God forbid you die, then it's in your kind of uh, will, you will give X percent to charity, often 5%. And what they do then is that they inspire entrepreneurs to be a part of this. They have networking events and they do all of these things, but they also have experts. I think there are like 60 people on staff that works on evaluating charities. Say so they evaluate who is the best, who makes the most impact. So they looked at like a thousand different climate change organizations and they evaluated them. They interviewed them. They tested, they did all these things to find which are the most proven, which have the biggest impact, where can we make the biggest impact. And then they give this information for free to the members. So, people, so the members can make uh, the dis best decisions without needing to uh, do the research themselves. So then they have they then have a climate fund where you can donate to that fund so instead of needing to donate to different causes yourself. They mm -hmm. will then direct it to the like top five, top ten best climate organizations that they know. So it's it's an easier way for me. So for example, I had shares in Gaming Innovation Group that I've had since their IPO, and they were in Norwegian Kroner. And I've sold all of those shares recently and I wanted to donate my Norwegian kroners instead of, and then this organization helps me to like, yeah, you can donate them to this account. So you don't need to worry about exchange rates and all of these things. We'll sort this out. We'll help you with this tax situation. So they simplify the giving process and then they change it to dollars with one of their collaboration partners who do that for free for them. And then they give the money. In this case, a lot of it goes to an organization called Clean Air Task Force in the US, who works, among other things, with this technology of getting diesel engines into ammonia engines. What's very interesting with that particular cause to me is that more or less all emissions from the shipping industry happen on international waters, mm -hmm. meaning that no country needs to take responsibility for it. Mm -hmm. And that's like two and a half percent of all emissions. It's as much as Germany. Exactly. Uh, so that happens on international waters. So to me, then that becomes, okay, so this is all the other parts, maybe countries can solve them, but countries are not going to solve this one because they don't have to, it's not their number. So that's the like challenge of entrepreneurs, which makes it like my heart beats a bit extra for solving that cause. So a lot of the donation then goes to cleaner task force and their research and their political work to get this technology more out there. And one thing that they're doing is that they're talking to Amazon.com, for example. Yes. And, and what they're trying to do then is to get Amazon to say to all the shipping companies that we will only allow shipping companies that uses ammonia engines. Because if Amazon.com says that, then a lot of shipping boats from China will start using this. So this organization that I'm giving money to is trying to get hold of Jeff Bezos and these kind of people to get them Love to it. do these things. So that's how they work. So it's a very different approach to climate change and not something they talk about in the media, but that is proven to have big, big, big potential. 
I love what you just said because a point I wanted to make to you today, Eric, is as I said before, you, you've you raised awareness in, within myself of this issue since I saw your social media post. And you know how when someone tells you about something and it becomes sort of the back, it's in the back of your head, you start to notice it more in the world around you. So today I was in the gym this morning, okay? One of the TVs was on in the background and I noticed an Amazon commercial come on. And that commercial, the main point of it was talking about sustainability. I forget the statistics they were putting out there, but they were saying exactly what you just said. Our shipping is going to be by 2030 or whatever, it's going to be like this, like this. And I was like, oh my God, that's so cool. I'm interviewing Eric later today about this very issue. So having these huge companies doing what you're saying is massive. And this brings me also to the Netflix program that David Attenborough has put on, which I watched because of you. <laughs> <laughs> And he said something that I actually, I wrote down this quote and I loved it. It said, he said, it's crazy that our banks and our pensions are investing in fossil fuel when these are the very things that are jeopardizing the future that we're saving for. I actually paused the movie and wrote this down because that really struck me because you talk about energy. And I was wondering what research you've done also on um, renewable energy, such as, you know, wind and, and solar, what kind of, um, impact can this have on the situation that we're having? So I've spoken to several experts about these causes and about these these ways of doing it. And the problem with both wind and solar, one of the problems with wind and solar is that it doesn't scale very well. It takes mm. up a lot of space. Like, I don't know the exact numbers, but you need give or take a thousand times more space in mm. solar than you would do with nuclear, for example. So you need vast spaces to do it. And you also suffer from instability in the sense that wind is only powerful when it's windy. Windy, yeah. Sun is only powerful when the sun is up, which means that during the nighttime you have nothing. So you could solve some issues with sun and wind. It's important, but they are not powerful enough to do it and they don't scale quickly enough. So for example, nuclear, you could expand much quicker and you have the exact same output every hour of the day, every time of the year and all these things. So wind and solar are meaningful, but they can only solve a very small part of the problem. And unfortunately, they get more credit that they can handle. So, for example, Germany tried to solve their climate with, well, solve this by implanting a lot of solar and a lot of wind. And they haven't got at all even closely to the same results as France did, who went for a nuclear situation. So they spent a lot more money. Uh, electricity got a lot more expensive in Germany than it did in France. Uh, and not because solar and wind is, is a bad solution. It's just not, it's not enough. It's not powerful enough. And it's probably not going to be anytime soon. Yes, yeah, I knew you would have a very thoughtful answer to this because I was wondering why they weren't listed you know, in your, in your, um, in your post, or I think I actually, I went straight to great.com and read your blog, which went into some more detail on, on to the points that you made of how we can actually make a change with the diesel, you know, moving to the uh, ammonia engines and nuclear. And I'll admit when I see the word nuclear power plant, I'm like, oh my God, you know, that's crazy. Um, yeah. but where else are you, or is there anywhere where you are educating people on all this information that you've obtained on how to fix this problem. I mean, what are you doing with all this knowledge that you, <laughs> that you have? I, I wish that I had more time in my life to uh, educate yeah. around this as well. So I don't talk much about it. Yeah. I talk to it one-on-one uh, -on -one with wealthy people. And if I get the opportunity, because I can see how they can have the impact. So when I did this campaign on Facebook, I was torn between trying to get all of the people I know to donate or just the people have the most money. And if I were going through all the people I knew, my belief is that some people would ship in 100 euros here, 100 euros there, and no one would come and ship in 200,000 euros if the first three people shipped in 200 euros. So I, I took the deliberate decision to not even try to get anyone to donate less than 10,000, because I believe that everyone else would maybe donate 10,000 together. And now the ones who donated the most, so we had one who shipped in 200,000 euros and one who shipped in 100,000 euros. And that would never happen if I tried to talk to the masses. I'm having these conversations 
with people who I believe have the power to make significant impact themselves, mm. because then I can talk about this in a trusting way. Like it's it's very hard to talk about nuclear with someone and try to talk to a hundred people at once because they're all skeptical. But if I talk to one person, you can address the questions. You can say, yeah, but what about solar? And I have the time to reply to that. I have the time to have that conversation. Like I have my, my in-laws visiting now here in, in Malta and my mother-in-law had the exact same uh, answer, like, yeah, but what about all the uh, nuclear, like the fighting that the climate activists have done for nuclear for decades? I'm like, yeah, unfortunately, that's the worst thing they could have done for the climate. Mm. So that's the worst thing we could have do for our environment. All the environment fighters just unfortunately made more problems for the world than they did. But it's really hard to have this conversation on a large scale. So I'm, I'm talking to people. I'm actively seeking these conversations with wealthy people around me because I believe that, um, unfortunately, those have the biggest chance of making an impact. Yeah, this is it's really interesting the way you're going about this, because I think this was also in your blog post. You said that a lot of people, oh, I'm going to eat more plant based diet. I'm going to walk instead of drive this kind of thing. And all of that is awesome. And I do that. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm saving the planet, you know, but um, but to make a huge impact, it, it needs to be more than that. And we really do need the actual money. And it's true. Um, yeah, I mean, to make, uh... if, if you're walking and you're eating less meat and you do all these things, best case scenario is that you can get your emissions near to zero. And yeah. you're not even going to get to zero because you're still going to drive a little bit. You're still going to do a little bit. Yeah, bit. yeah. But best case scenario, you get yourself. If you live in a cabin in the forest, and you not talk to anyone. You don't have electricity. You go down to zero. But we zero is not enough. We need to get to minus a lot. Uh, so unfortunately, all the choices you can take is good. But without uh, donations, without political impact, without voting with your money for like getting Amazon to have a natural zero emission like shipping, mm -hmm. we are not going to get close enough. So those things are good, but they're not even close to enough, unfortunately. Yeah. And, and I know that, that, that since COVID uh, reared its ugly head here, some people were saying, oh, this is great for the planet, you know, because people aren't traveling as much and they're not going out as much. Wondering if you've, I don't know whether you've done research on this, but I mean, is, is it making a difference or is this just literally such a small drop in the bucket that it's nothing? What, what have you found? It, it is making a difference, but significantly less than you would think. It's mm. about 10 percent of okay. all the emissions less. So the biggest drivers of emissions is still like food, uh, getting food out there, getting electricity to our homes. And both of them are still uh, at peak. It's still it's production for clothes and for all of these things, which People are still buying, but they're buying it online. Transport is obviously down due to COVID. And I think roughly about 10% less emissions than with COVID. So it's, mm. it's making a big impact, but still not enough. And obviously not long term. Hopefully we we're out of the COVID problems a year from now. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think you're right. And and once we can travel with more ease, people are going to be like, yes, let me go on vacation. And yeah. <laughs> straight away. All right, straight away. But maybe. Maybe things like what you're doing, Eric, will will actually, you know, really, really stick with some people. And actually, I was doing some brainstorming myself, just with myself, to think of ways that our industry in general could could get the more awareness surrounding this issue. Because not everybody can donate. Well, certainly not everybody can donate a hundred thousand. You know, um, but for one example, I obviously came up with was to do interviews, right? One with you. One with, I'm going to also do one with Calvin's foundation, the Calvin Air Foundation, where he's doing quite a bit of work in different areas, but still amazing work. Another thing I thought of, I wonder if it would ever happen, is that, you know, maybe our conference organizers would consider adding one session, you know, alongside their events to have people like you talk we about. Actually, I had that conversation with uh, Iman on Sigma. Love it. So yeah. it was we, we we've been talking about doing something together now for the event that was supposed to be in November, yeah. but now that event got cancelled and they moved it to February, and I'm not going to attend in February because I'm going to be a father and yes, I want to I, I, I want to focus on that. Uh, my I would have a very pregnant uh, fiance at that time, <laughs> uh, and I don't think she would appreciate if I left the country <laughs> to go up and talk on a stage. Uh, so. I, <laughs> He has actually shown interest. So Sigma is doing some uh, inspiring efforts here 
Amazing. And hopefully that will will come along because sure, individual people can't do that much. It's well, it's hard, but we could also like influence our the CSR work in our different companies, getting people to do that. If if some casino would reach out and be a part of this campaign, if Calvin and the foundation want to go in, I, I will double those donations as well. It doesn't have to come from my uh, wealthy friends that I tagged. Uh, so if there are people around that I would be more than happy to educate and support as well. So to just raise this awareness and hopefully be able to unify an entire industry. Uh, yeah. I mean, if this could be something that we collaborate about, I wrote that in my post that, okay, guys, we are usually competitors. We're usually fighting, but when it comes to our planet, we only have one. So we kind of need to collaborate with this. So we're all on the same team. We need to cooperate. And it's the same with the industry. I mean, no one's going to gamble if we have too big of a climate problem. So we're still exactly. stuck. <laughs> exactly. Oh, Eric, well, I, I, and we need to have a beautiful planet for, for your baby. <laughs> <laughs> for my baby, yes. <laughs> so this is another real driver, I'm sure, for you to make sure the world's <laughs> a beautiful place. Um, but uh, I, I, I'm happy to hear about Iman and Sigma. That That's really cool news. And um, you know, let's let's try to get the word even further out there, and um, and and you know, keep us posted on how this this campaign is going. I'm super proud of you. You've actually <laughs> done. You. you know, a lot of people say things, and you know, oh yeah, I want to do this, want to do that, and you've actually done something really quite big here. Thank um, you. I think you're amazing, and um, keep keep up the smiling and the good work that you do. And looking forward to having you back at Calvinair.com super soon. Thank you so much. I'm looking much. forward to be back. Thank you for having me. Excellent. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Becky Legero for calvinair.com.